Hey gang, welcome to your 17th Python 3 tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about the init function. Alright then, so in the last tutorial we went ahead and created our very first class, Planet, and then we created a new object based on this class which then had all of these different properties, the name, radius, gravity system and this method called orbit as well. But we also said that if we created new instances of this class, for example, Planet X down here, where we're creating a new instance, then that object as well is also going to have exactly the same property values, these things right here, as this one. So there wouldn't really be any point in creating multiple instances because they're, in essence, all the same. So we said, well, what if we want to pass in our own parameters? What if, for example, when we create a new planet, we want to pass in here the name of the planet, the radius, the gravity, and the system. Well, we can do that, and we do that using this init function. So this init function right here is required when we create a new class, and if we didn't include it, then it would just default back to a standard one that is implemented by Python. So we have to include this first initialization function. This sets up the attributes for us. And we said that it takes this self parameter right here, and this function automatically runs when we create a new instance. So even though we're not passing this self parameter within this function right here, where we're setting up a new instance of this planet, it's passed kind of automatically into this init function. So if we deleted this, then it's not going to work. And I'm just going to demonstrate this. I'll save it and I'll run this file. So now we see this error and it says it takes zero positional arguments, but one was given, right? So one was given but it's not taking it right here. So we're actually given it an argument, but in this function, we're not saying we want to take it. So that has to exist. So this self um, parameter right here refers to the instance of the object we're creating. And that's why we can attach all of these different attributes to self so that when we create that instance, they're accessible on this variable, all right? So now what we're gonna do is pass in to this function right here, this initialization function. We wanna pass in some custom values for these different properties right here. So they're not all the same every time we create a new object. So first of all, let's accept those into this initialization function. So I wanna say name, also the radius, we need the gravity, and also the system. Okay, so we're accepting all of those different things now. Now, when we create a new instance of this class, a new object, we can pass through those different variables, those different parameters. So the name of Hoth in this example is going to be Hoth. So we're passing that through first because that's the first one it ex um, expects right there. The second one is going to be the radius. So we'll pass through that number, which is two and a lot of zeros. Then it's the gravity, which is 5.5. And then finally, the system, which is a string again, and that's the Hoth system. Okay, so now we're passing this data through to this constructor function right here when we're creating a new instance of that class, a new object. So what we can do now is instead of hard coding these values right here, we can refer to the things that are passed through. We can access these things. So I can set this equal to name, which is this variable we pass through, Hoth. Then down here, I can say radius. Then under here, I can say gravity. And then down below, I can say Hoth, or rather system, right here. Okay, cool. So now if I save this and run it again, then hopefully this is going to be exactly the same as before, where it outputs the different things. And we do get an error, and that's because of this dude right here, where we're not actually passing anything through. Okay, so that's just saying we're requiring to pass through four arguments, these things here, and we're not doing it right here. So I'll tell you what, let's make a new planet and pass through some different arguments. So I'm going to call this one Nabu and set that equal to planet. We're creating a new instance right now. And inside we need, oops, not outside, inside, we need a name first of all, which is Nabu. Then we're going to do the radius, which we'll do this time as three and all of the zeros. And then after that, we need the gravity. We'll say eight for this. And then finally the system, which is going to be the Nabu system. All right. So now if we print out these things as well, then hopefully this time it's going to print out this stuff and not all this Hoth stuff, right? So let us print out, first of all, um, and it's a formatted string, name, and then it's going to be Naboo.name. Underneath that, we'll print out another formatted string, and inside here we'll say radius, 
is Naboo dot radius. Uh, we'll do the gravity as well. We'll say print another formatted string. Then gravity is Naboo dot gravity. And then finally, we're going to print out the orbit function. So we'll say print Naboo dot orbit like so. All right then, so let's run this file again. I'm going to clear it first of all, run the file. And now we get all this hoth stuff first of all, and then we get this stuff down here. So we're printing out Naboo, three in a load of zeros, eight, and Naboo is orbiting in the Naboo system. Cool. So now what we're doing is creating multiple instances of this class. We're making multiple planet objects, passing in unique data for each planet, and then we can access that data right here and it's passed in to this function so that it can be assigned on these properties. And again, when we refer to these properties in the orbit method, we're referring to each planet's unique values which are passed in, which is really cool because now we could add as many different planets with as many different attributes as we wanted to. And then we could work with these planets. We could use the data and call methods on them and they're all gonna be unique. So that's how we work with this init function right here to create new instances of a class. In the next tutorial, what we're going to do is take a look at some of the different attributes that we can assign to this and also the different ways we can assign methods as well.